From inside their giant T-shaped tower in the Bay of Jump City, California, one team of DC heroes protects the West Coast in between totally rad pizza hangouts, the unstoppable Teen Titans. Starring in two hit cartoons that couldn't be more different, this Fab Five's been training, squabbling, and flirting on Cartoon Network airtime for over a decade. Hey everyone, I'm Adrian with Channel Frederator, and today we're looking back at both versions of these high-flying, shape-shifting, gut-busting super BFFs in Then vs. Now Teen Titans. Titans, go! <laughs> The Titans appear. Coming off of the success of Samurai Jack, WB Animation veteran Glenn Murakami finally got a shot at developing his very own series when former Cartoon Network Vice President Sam Register appointed Glenn as head of development for 2003's Teen Titans. This was an effort to create a companion show similar to Justice League, but with more appeal towards younger audiences. Prior to that, Glenn was background artist on Batman the Animated Series, art director on Superman, and a producer for Batman Beyond, so there's no shortage of experience when it came to bringing Robin, Starfire, Raven, Cyborg, and Beast Boy to life for yet another DC animated adventure. The result of which dubbed Teen Titans an instant classic, spanning 5 seasons, 65 episodes, and 1 TV movie. The series successfully introduced the iconic comic book crime fighting team to a new generation of fans. Five years later, the gang reappeared on Cartoon Network, this time shorter and goofier, in a series of sketches called New Teen Titans in 2011. These shorts proved popular enough to launch 2013's Teen Titans Go, the Anything Goes follow-up sitcom that refuses any kind of continuity at all. With the original cast on board, plus a new look and attitude, the Go Titans have proved their oh-so-funny might, and are wrapping up their fourth season mischief this fall with plans for a Teen Titans Go feature-length film which will be hitting theaters on July 27, 2018. Story and Style after seeing just a few minutes of either show, anyone can tell that these two titans have their own original, distinct personalities that differ drastically from one another. For instance, the original series focused on long-form development, showing the team during their best highs and lowest lows, while taking many familiar coming-of-age tropes and juxtaposing them against grand action storylines. Its goofy follow-up, Teen Titans Go!, is a slice-of-life comedy about the ins and outs of everyday life shared among roommates. It's episodic, shamelessly laid back, and completely unlike its predecessor. Go aspires to be far more reality warping, meta, and chaotic in hilarious day-to-day -day scenarios that would be impossible for the original series to achieve due to its serious tone. It's almost like comparing apples to oranges, because the two shows take a completely different approach. For the original, each season follows one titan's central arc. This allows the week-by-week -week missions to orbit and crash against one character's journey in a way that feels relatable and intimate. By keeping the storyline serialized, consequences stack up and raise the stakes. Even the Titans' arch nemesis Slade, aka Deathstroke, but don't tell TV stations that, gets a slight redemption arc at the end of season 4. However, that doesn't mean the original wasn't occasionally spontaneous and gut-busting. In the season 2 episode, Fractured, Robin discovers that he has a tiny doppelganger by the name of Larry, and Raven is turned into a bunny in episode 11 of season 3, Bunny Raven. But even these hilarious moments maintain the drama-ridden hormonal essence of adolescence that was heavily present throughout the series. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Teen Titans Go! shows the sunny side of teenage life with mustache Mondays, hygiene hangups, and even a few stylized musical moments. In this series, the no-holds-barred style of storytelling allows the Titans to turn into ghosts, to parody itself, as it did in Toon Titans and Teen Titrons, and explore insane B stories like the time Starfire's pet, a mutant moth larva named Silky, romance the wife of a Mexican drug cartel boss. So you see, these Titans can go anywhere that the writers decide to take them because there's less of a central plot and more goofing off. However, that's not to say Go doesn't have its own share of battles. Raven vs. Ravager is definitely a fan favorite, and there's even a Toho Studio-esque, quite literal food battle in the episode Burger vs. Burrito. It's this absurd humor coupled with the spirit of unrestrained friendship that makes Teen Titans Go stand all on its own, even with all the haters. Animation and Character Design Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go! both employ expressive Japanese-influenced animation, which highlight the characters' personalities through exaggerated actions and iconography, such as characters shrinking when they're embarrassed or becoming so angry that their heads grow to concerning, albeit hilarious, sizes. The original Teen Titans was drawn in homage to fantasy-slash-action-adventure anime, and it wears these influences on its sleeve. The episode Car Trouble mimics the entire three-and-a-half-minute chase scene from Miyazaki's The Castle of Cagliostro, down to the level of detail visible in each shot. Another prime example would be Starfire forehead growth and transformation. The way she tries to push it back into her head directly mirrors Naota's forehead growth from Fooly Cooly, the anime that influenced much of the show's art style according to series creator Glenn Murakami. Go takes a visibly different approach through the utilization of miniature chibi-style designs. The hand-drawn cells of the original are no more, and in lieu of this is the bold line Flash animation which is now synonymous with Cartoon Network style. This trendy new look has lots of vibrant colors and imaginative settings with simplistic backgrounds, so as not to distract from the crazy amounts of energy built into 
into the characters. The look mimics other popular Cartoon Network programs like Adventure Time, Regular Show, or Clarence. In fact, lead character designer Chris Battle is a CN veteran whose work in animation goes back to such network classics as the Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, and even Ah Real Monsters on Nickelodeon. However, to distinguish itself from the rest, Go also incorporates a handful of animation styles by directly recreating iconic scenes from other popular shows, including the Sailor Moon transformation sequence, past renditions of the Titans, and even the occasional photorealistic insert, just to switch things up personality, and relationships. When it comes to character dynamics and relationships, Teen Titans Go! has an unfair advantage. Its episodic format allows fans to witness up-close and personal details from behind the walls of Titan Tower like never before, such as Raven's love of ponies and daytime talk shows. We also find out why the rest of the group dubbed her Lady Legacies. Robin is now far more competitive, arrogant, and impulsive than usual with his crime-fighting competitions and random outbursts, which are becoming more and more meme-worthy. Starfire's alien customs are more satirical, such as her Glorb dinner. Her grasp on the English language is even more questionable than before, especially now that she puts the in front of every noun and has a tendency to overreact when she misunderstands slang. Beast Boy is childlike and aloof with his off-the-wall comebacks and goofy mannerisms. He and Cyborg seem to have less conviction than before, and they're both inseparable now that they're self-proclaimed best friends. Cyborg is completely the opposite of his old self with his newfound laid-back attitude. His interests lie solely in food, video games, his buddy Beast Boy, and dance parties, for some reason. The romantic aspect of the show is also far more casual and fleeting, such as Beast Boy's love poem to Raven and her respective 19 reasons why she isn't interested. Not to mention the constant jealousy and hijinks that ensue over Robin's crush on Starfire, although it's not entirely clear whether or not the feeling's mutual this time. Relationship arcs in the original series take entire seasons to occur for each Titan, and naturally there's far more drama involved. Immediately, hero slash villain Terra and Beast Boy come to mind. He's trustworthy in her eyes, and she ends up exploiting this part of Beast Boy's heart. Still, Beast Boy's feelings persist, and she eventually becomes an honorary titan, even after she betrayed them under Slade's manipulation. Beast Boy and Terra's friendship, troubled as it may be, creates a spine of the series beginning in Season 2, and ends with her noble sacrifice during the very last episode. It's a similar concept for the ambiguous relationship between Starfire and Robin, who don't find closure until Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo, the post-series TV movie. By the end of the original five seasons, you can tell how much the Titans have changed. In comparison to Go, it's a much slower payoff, but far more emotionally satisfying. The DC Legacy Although both versions of the titular Teen Titans differ in continuity, something they do share is the joyful sense of myth-building. The world of DC is unmistakably present in Jump City, California. In the meta-iconic world of Teen Titans Go!, the memorabilia serves as a reminder of the vast scope of characters that make up the DC universe. In fact, fun DC easter eggs are implanted everywhere in the show, from Marshmallow Manhunter's cereal to Robin's Batman alarm clock. The list goes on. For the original Titans, feeling the weight of their origins isn't easy and therefore you don't see much of it. Running from the past is a fundamental aspect of each character's internal struggle. Their emotions get the best of them, and when they do, the team tends to split up. We're introduced to this concept early on in Season 1's Divide and Conquer, when Robin and Cyborg have a petty squabble that results in Cyborg quitting the team. It becomes apparent that their own insecurities cause the Titans to form barriers and shut themselves off from one another. This recurring theme of teen angst drives the series forward and helps define the character arcs and internal growth. Another fine instance can be found in the episode Spellbound, when Raven literally isolates herself because she fears she's misunderstood by the other Titans. It's through these arcs that the writers truly illustrate the struggles of being human, and for a Titan, it's even more daunting than usual. However, the original does harbor lots of cool DC guest stars, including the video game-obsessed Atlas played by veteran voice actor Keith David. Then, in later seasons, the roster expands to form an alliance of familiar team supergroups, including Beast Boy's former team, the Doom Patrol. There's also Young Jericho, Panther, Herald, Hotspot, and more. Go's cast is just too long to list, but unlike the original, it goes on to include characters from all over the board, rather than just DC characters. So while there's awesome guest appearances like Weird Al as Darkseid, there's also random cameos from characters like Santa Claus and even the Powerpuff Girls. Fanbase. In the hilarious meta-themed episode of Teen Titans Go! entitled The Fourth Wall, the villain named Control Freak pokes fun at the new series by literally listing all the fans' biggest complaints. According to the episode, it's Control Freak's fault that the original Teen Titans series was cancelled, and if the new one doesn't improve, he'll do the same. This is a sly jab at the initial negative reception caused over the contemporary rendition of the Titans, but now the swap seems to have paid off. 
fans are finally warming up to the new series, despite all of you guys in the comments section saying that a lot of people hate it, as well as the thought of two generations of Titan toys to collect. And after several Annie Award nominations with the 2003 show, the Titans have stayed on course with Go's 2017 Emmy nomination. It even won a few BTVA awards too. Still, for fans on a nostalgia trip, it's definitely worth mentioning that Cartoon Network has brought back the original Teen Titans for daytime reruns. Now Die Hard fans can watch both series unfold, and between the two of them, there's enough drama, comedy, and heartwarming moments for everyone to enjoy. All things considered, there's no denying that Teen Titans Go is its own creature. It's edgy, absurd, and relatively low concept as far as superheroes are concerned, but that's what makes it so refreshing and appealing. It's different. So what if there's a completely new face on the Teen Titans franchise? It may not be what old fans remember, but it certainly matches that of a new generation. So if you're unsure about trying the new series, just remember what the 2006 finale taught us. Things change. Once again, I'm Adrian, and thanks for watching Then vs. Now Teen Titans. Who's your favorite Titan? Do you watch both shows or just one? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe, because remember, Frederator loves you.